Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, the latest on Ezekiel Elliott's suspension appeal. Plus, should the NFL coaches discourage their players from protesting during the National Anthem? And former Cowboys defensive coordinator Rob Ryan is in studio to discuss the Dallas defense. Skip, Shannon, let's debate. Let's get into the latest on Ezekiel Elliott. He is expected to appeal his six-game suspension today. Elliott's appeal will reportedly focus on his ex-girlfriend, Tiffany Thompson. The Fort Worth Star-Telegram obtained documents in which Thompson threatened to ruin Elliott's career after he broke up with her. According to the documents, Thompson encouraged a friend to lie to the police about an alleged assault and told Elliott, quote, you are a black male athlete. I'm a white girl. They are not going to believe you. NFL investigator Lisa Friel was reportedly unable to endorse Thompson's credibility because she repeatedly misled investigators. We also found out yesterday that Roger Goodell did not attend Elliott's hearing in June. Mm. Mm. Skip, what's your mm. reaction to the latest news? So, Joy and Shannon, mm -hmm. here we go again in quote unquote making the case against Ezekiel Elliott six game suspension to me our commissioner Roger Goodell is again 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 making the case he should be fired and I've made the case before after the Ray Rice fiasco he should have been fired remember the hot seat he was on then remember Barry. the press conference he had to do that fateful Friday to try to quote unquote save his job then they had that elevator tape, and they chose to ignore it. Then, a year ago, you and I disagreed on this. A lot of people disagreed, but I thought Roger Goodell tried to frame and railroad and ruin the reputation of one Tom Brady just to punish the Patriots for their history of cheating. I heard no conclusive evidence and thought the commissioner made a buffoon of himself with that Wells report. That was last year. So now that was Tom Brady, who's now number one on the merchandise list. Now we come to the number two player on the current merchandise list, one Ezekiel Elliott. And I'm waiting for conclusive proof I cannot find that he, in fact, beat up the, the accuser repeated times, three times, three straight, three days in a row yeah. in, in back in the, uh, June of, um, I'm sorry, July of 2016. And I'm a little lost because now the commissioner again looks foolish and incompetent because he's handed down a six game suspension to Ezekiel Elliott without even interviewing him or the accuser. Seriously? <laughs> so let me get this straight. We talked about Article 46 yesterday. It gives the commissioner absolute power. You are judge, jury, and executioner. The buck stops with you. Yet you didn't even look into the eyes of Ezekiel and his accuser. You didn't even study the body language as they testified to you before you handed down the suspension. So the buck stops with you. But wait a second. Oh, you're passing the buck to the commission that you named. And you can now say, don't blame me. They did it. They told me to do it. <laughs> and yet the woman that he hired, Roger Goodell, hired to be his chief advisor on domestic violence, Lisa Friel, back in 2014, post Ray Rice fiasco. Correct. According to the Fort Worth Star-Telegram piece, which was well done by uh, Clarence Hill, Lisa Friel was unable to give a clear endorsement of the accuser's credibility because she repeatedly misled investigators. Now, again, I'm going to restate my case. If you can conclusively show me that on those three days in question, he beat the hell out of that woman, he should be suspended for the whole year. Seriously. At least that. I'm out. But nobody can prove that to me because the more I read about her, her credibility gets worse and worse. And again, we've seen all kinds of cases where low credibility, but it happened. And if right. it happened, it happened. And I'm good to go with that. But there are all these quotes about how the alleged victim, according to several eyewitnesses, after Ezekiel told her, you're out, we're breaking up, you can't come to my birthday party, she repeatedly said, I'm going to ruin your life. And she did not call police until that point, and then later admitted that she made up that case of, that instance of domestic violence, yet the NFL continues to say, that on July 17th, 19th, and 21st, they list re 
all sorts of injuries to her arms, neck, shoulders, hands, wrists, hips. And they're pitting their case on those three days of domestic violence when, in fact, the Columbus Police Department investigated all of the above and found her testimony not credible enough, not consistent enough to even charge Ezekiel Elliott mm -hmm. with said domestic violence. So now we come around to Ezekiel's side is saying that she had pre-existing injuries from a bar fight that she engaged in as she worked as what's called a quote-unquote doll at a Columbus nightclub. And I'm getting more and more lost by the moment. All I know is that I kept telling you that Jerry Jones, I'd never heard him so adamant about saying publicly about an accusation, there's nothing there, there's nothing there, there's nothing there. We have yet to hear from Jerry Jones since this suspension was handed down, except for reports that he is very angry about it. So now we have, in back-to-back -back years, Roger Goodell is trying to take down, or did take down, Tom Brady and now Ezekiel Elliott, and he has gone after Robert Kraft and now Jerry Jones, the two most powerful owners in the sport. And I'm wondering, is he just trying to curry favor and please the other 30 owners who clearly want him to put these teams in their places? That, that's, that's how it comes across to me. And for that, it's so unfair to those two teams and those two players that I'm right where I was after Ray Rice. I don't see how the commissioner keeps a job that paid him last year $33 million mm -hmm. and a high in his 11 years as commissioner of $44 million. Mm -hmm. Really? How do you keep that job? Help me out, Mr. Hall of Famer. Uh, because you keep making the owners in excess of $230 million a year. Yep. And so that's the price of doing business. Let me take the commissioner first, Skip. I thought he hired this council in addition to, not instead of. See what That's we see from point. see what we what we notice from the commissioner, he goes from too heavily involved to not involved enough. Yep. Skip, this is a bench trial. So there's no jury, there's a judge, which is Commissioner Goodell. So basically he says, I don't want to hear her testimony personally. I don't want to hear his testimony personally. Just send me the summations and I'll and I'll go from there. Skip, when this ca a case like this. You don't even need to hear what Lisa Friel and the other board members are asking. You just want to look at Zeke. You want to look at this, this young lady. Yep. Oh, I want to see your body language. I'm going to see how you answer these questions. I, my grandmother used to say, boy, you never have to remember the truth. It's a lie that you must remember. Skip, there's too many inconsistencies. You can't say her credibility is in question. And you, you wonder whether or not she's misleading you, but says, okay, I believe she's telling the absolute truth here. Now, Skip, I'm not going to say that something didn't happen, but credibility is huge in these cases because unlike Ray Rice, we had a video. It was not a he said, she said, because in the beginning, that's what well, it was. Well, we had it, but the NFL allegedly didn't have they, it. They didn't get yeah. it, Skip. They didn't okay. get it, Skip. Yeah. Didn't skip. Got it. I mean, it, would get, it got sent it got there. It got sent there, but nobody saw it. To I don't a, know what To it. another 200 West no, Park Avenue. But yeah, uh, that's right. It went to the wrong address. So now he's got, Skip, how, how can you hand down six games when you don't hear testimony personally? You don't hear, you're not in the room from either the victim or the accuser. That doesn't seem right to me, Skip. It doesn't seem right that you can hand out. I, and it also explains to me why neither one of these law enforcement, depart, law enforcement departments yep. in Ohio or Miami, yep. I see why now they refuse to press mm -hmm. charges. They did not. Because they no. did not believe mm -hmm. the victim. Her credibility is not what it was supposed to be. The hardest part of this thing, Skip, is that we have a credibility issue. Now it comes down who do you believe least? Mm -hmm. that, that's basically what it is in a nutshell. I mean, and I, it's not about no victim shaming. If she said that, now, this is from Zeke's side. It is. I want to hear her side. I want to see what she said, and then we can go from there. But, Skip, I don't know how the NFL got here. I would have felt more comfortable if the NFL would have said, Zeke, what you did on March 11th by pulling that young lady's top down, yep. that is conduct detrimental That's, to the NFL. I got it. I'm going to give you two games right. for that. Got it. But, Skip, what they're trying to do is that what we've seen here is that they overcorrect. They didn't come down hard enough on Ray Rice, 
So now all subsequent cases is yeah. that we're going to come down to... But, Skip, this is not the case you want to sink your teeth in. There's too much of a credibility issue going on here. And I'm not saying she's lying, but once... And I read it yesterday, Skip. A single lie discovered is enough to create doubt in every truth expressed. It is. So the NFL is saying, okay, and Lisa Friel said, well, she's lying about this. Mm. She's misleading us about this, but she's telling the truth about that. Skip, how do you get there? Credibility is everything in a he said, she said. You can't, you can't fabricate stuff and say that she told a witness to say he did this. Come on now, Skip. Now, you know that's not even, that's not even close to being right. Yep. And the, for the commissioner, for you to put your name on this, six games for this, and, and it's, it's shaky at best. At best. If this, tri if this case were to go before a jury, Joy, let's just say for some odd godly reason, they, they uh, uh, a grand jury hand down, he would, the jury wouldn't even leave the courtroom to deliberate. It would never make it to a jury, obviously. This, this is a real case, and the police chose to not prosecute yeah. because the burden of proof wasn't enough to get it to that but point. It's that, even, if you're even if you had a good friend who was a prosecutor, who was the DA, and you brought him this skip, he go like, I'm sorry, bro. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. Yeah, it but, just means that the, the burden of proof for the law is much higher than the NFL. But, but you, you, here's the thing. If you just tell the truth, you can't make up one instance and then expect police, police, uh, uh, people to believe you on another, Joe. That's the only thing I'm saying. I'm not saying that it didn't happen because maybe it did. Maybe, maybe it happened and when she says, I'm going to ruin you, yeah. she meant I'm going to tell the authorities what you did to me. Yeah. Maybe that's the case. Could I'm be. not going to leap to the conclusion and say, oh, Could this be. was... None of this, all of this was happenstance. Maybe she is a guilty lover. Maybe she's like, hold on, Zeke. I've been dating you for two years while you were at Ohio State, driving the old beat-up car. Now you about to come into $30 million. You about to leave me alone? You about to leave me back here? Mm -hmm. Nah, bro, I've been with you. I've been down with you from the beginning. I need to go with you. Maybe it was a case like that. But, Skip, this is not the case for the NFL to say, I'll get tough policy on domestic violence. This is the case. It, it just starts to smack of your basic makeup call for Ray Rice, like, oh, now we're going to make Ezekiel yes. the face of domestic violence in the NFL just to show we're going to stamp it out. No. Well, you better stamp it out with conclusive and revolting evidence. Well, Skip, Zeke is a little late, late for that, because not only is Ray Rice the face of domestic violence in the NFL, he's the face of domestic violence in the yeah, U.S. Yeah, he is. He's the case. Yeah. Now, they make it seem like Ray Rice is the first man to ever commit domestic violence against a woman. And it just so happens Ray was a professional athlete. And so guess what happened, Skip? Not just professional athletes, but the NFL. They started looking at everybody that had a girlfriend or a wife, side-eyed, like, oh, I wonder if he did what he did to Ray, what Ray Rice did to his fiance. Yep. And I'm like, hold on. This was going on long before Ray Rice was even born. But how you try to tag him, the same way they tag dog fight, uh, Mike Vick with the dog fighting. Mm -hmm. But, Skip, I, we had video. But, Skip, your word got to mean something. For me, I lived 48 years, Skip. For, I'm 49 now. My grandmother died I was 43. From the time I remember until the time I, she was passed, I can remember everything my grandmother said. My grandfather died in 77. I was eight years old. Everything he said in my presence, I can tell you. I can tell you where I was when my sister called me and told me my nephew had passed. Mm -hmm. I can tell you everything. Skip, when a traumatic incident... Now, and I get it. Sometimes people, they say when people have a traumatic uh, uh, instant, incident happen to them, they forget. But Skip, you got to... You, got to, you can't lie. Because once you lie, nobody's going to believe... You, you crying for everybody. Look, she's lying. I don't believe her. Why would you make something up? Why would you ask a friend to lie for you in this instance? Because now, if something were to really happen, Skip, it's going to be hard for people to believe you. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that people would do this to someone realizing the heightened sense of awareness that not only the NFL, but the but a, a society have on domestic violence. This is nothing to play with. Mm -mm. I mean, that, Skip, those are, that's the kind of tag, you know, there's a few tags you never want to get, and, and all of them are bad, but as a, 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 an abuser... Yeah. Or, or a pedophile or a predator. Skip, you don't want those monikers. You don't want those jackets. Mm -hmm. And when someone tags you with that, do you know how hard it is for you to get from under that? It's, man, I can't believe, I, 
I just okay. don't know. I don't know what else to say, Skip. Okay, one more piece of damaging evidence from Ezekiel's side against her. And again, this is, they're going to present this on appeal. Ezekiel says he's quote unquote 100% certain that the accuser told him on July 22nd, and I quote, this is from Ezekiel, you are a black male athlete. I'm a white girl. They are not going to believe you. Okay, now, flip side of that is, is there something that we don't know from her yet? Does she, is there something that would be, help me out, Joy, with this, um, something that she wouldn't want made public about what she went through, some other piece of evidence that we're just not privy to, that if we all knew it, we'd say, aha, okay, now I get it. But Joy, you were once a victim of domestic violence. What, how is this hitting you? How is, what, what is it in your, 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 what's your gut feeling here? Well, we knew that there was going to be some sort of suspension. We've been mm -hmm. talking about this for months, so a year really almost. Right. So there's, to me, there's three scenarios that are, that are in work here, possibilities. One, she is a victim. She's being slandered, which is when you are accused and you're trying to defend yourself, a textbook way to defend yourself is mm -hmm. to discredit the person that is right. accusing mm -hmm. you. Right. So all this that we're hearing is coming from Ezekiel's side. side, all right. the text messages, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I imagine there's some text messages that Zeke sent back to her. We're not seeing any of those. Right. Um, so that's a textbook thing to do is to make, is to discredit the accuser, prove that she's lying. Well, if she's lying about one thing, she's lying about all of it. And that there is something else, like you said, that we don't know about that's going to come out or that isn't coming out because she personally requested yes. it for it to not to come out. Or this is being completely botched. He's being set up in frames, which would be an absolute disaster for right. everyone involved. Or three, that there's, there's not really evidence, hard evidence, which in a lot of these cases there isn't. It's a he said, she said. Correct. There's no credibility on either side. Exactly. And it's a matter of who you believe and who you don't believe. And that the NFL isn't being as for, forthcoming and clear and transparent as we thought they would. So if it's botched, that's a disaster. It's going to set back all the conversation about domestic violence. It'll put Roger Goodell in a bad spot. Obviously, Ezekiel's in a bad spot. It's horrible for everyone. But anytime this... These type of cases you saw with Jameis Winston, uh, which is obviously a completely different situation, but mm -hmm. um, Ray Rice, anytime these kind of situations come up and it's tried in the court of public opinion, almost always the majority of people side with the man because multiple reasons you can get into psycho the psychology of all of it. But a big thing is you don't want to be the person who, you know, sided with the victim and then he's slandered forever. That feeling of being falsely accused of something is horrible is traumatizing for anyone that's ever even experienced something hey. remotely close to that. That exactly yeah. that feeling is mm -hmm. is horrific, yes. and it's very hard to clear your name from that, even if you are proven to be innocent. So to me, the fact that it's six games, the fact that it's Roger Goodell, the whole thing is very murky. And my deepest hope is that Roger Goodell did his due diligence, that they did make the right decision, and that there's just something that we don't know about that they are either waiting to reveal or that they know and are going to keep private and stick to their guns on. Mm. And if, Joy, you mentioned it. Take it from someone that was falsely accused. Because at the time I was accused, I was on the front page. But when... When it's cleared, yeah. And then when it was... It didn't... She dropped the charges. Yeah. Because she, she didn't go to police. She didn't get anything anyway. That was on the back page. Yeah. And I just asked the question, where do I go to get my name back? How do I get these people to unhear what they heard who had formed this opinion about me? What, where do I go to get that back? See, now, oh, oh it, that happens so infrequently. But the fact that it happened. Okay, so now, bottom line, it's the appeals stage. And we talked about it yesterday, and I made the case that I figured Roger Goodell had heard their eye-to-eye -eye testimony, and so I thought, why would they both go to New York again, or in this case, just right. Ezekiel, to, to testify again and say the same things that he had already heard? Right. Well, he hasn't heard any of it straight from Ezekiel's mouth, right? Correct. So, again, we're talking about domestic violence and a policy of six games for first-time offender, and it's still hard for me to believe that Roger Goodell could back off a six-game suspension, even though... There's going to be, I guess, some new evidence presented that wasn't presented to the commission. 
I don't know. It's still hard for me to believe because Roger Goodell, if he backs off to four games, three games, whatever, he, he would look increasingly foolish like he would have to admit that I didn't know exactly, oh, right. I didn't know this. Oh, we, we, this is new to us. But Skip, if, really? half of what Ezekiel's, if half of what Zeke's uh, argument is, is true, if half of it's true, yeah. how do you even get this, how do you get the sixth game to begin with? Well, if any of that is true, and all the things that she's saying yeah. and said to him are true, yeah. that makes her not a good person, but that doesn't still mean that he didn't no. put his hands on her mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Uh, what we're hearing is obviously slanderous and terrible, but that, again, still doesn't mean that he didn't put his hands on her. We, we, we just need cl clarification from the NFL, which is what we thought we were going to get and what we're not getting. So we'll see what happens in the next coming days. No mercy. Hey, guys, before we move on, I wanted to tell you that the Undisputed podcast is brought to you by Barbasol. The biggest thing to happen to Barbasol since shaving cream is also the only thing to happen to Barbasol since shaving cream. Introducing new Barbasol razors. The brand America trusts for a close, comfortable shave now has premium disposable razors. Barbasol's close shave technology on every razor means you get an advanced pivoting head and ultra-thin open flow blades. The Ultra 6 Plus razor also features a seventh blade specifically designed to refine and style tricky areas like under the nose, sideburns, and beard. Visit Barbersol.com and get a $2 savings coupon and see for yourself why Barbersol razors are the number one new disposable razors out there. You're looking good, America. You're shaving with Barbersol. No mercy. Our next guest has spent nearly 20 years as a defensive coach in the NFL, winning two Super Bowls. He spent last season working with his brother Rex in Buffalo. Before that, he was the defensive coordinator of the Saints and Cowboys. Rob Ryan, welcome to Undisputed. Yeah, in Cleveland well, and Oakland. Yeah. <laughs> and around a bunch, so yeah, nice, you know, nice to be I've here. always wanted to ask you, your twin brother obviously was a head coach for a long time in the league, and I always thought you would get a shot to be a head coach. Why do you think that did not happen? I think it's because I uh, didn't protest the national anthem. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little heated, but uh, no, I, I, I'm not real sure. I think. Uh, I mean, people I only always had, said only you had, know, that your hair was, you wouldn't cut your hair. Do you think that had something to do with it? I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, maybe there's a certain look. I think they're going for more, uh, uh, you know, bald and boring, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, uh, whatever it is, it's, uh, you know, shoot, I think every coach has a dream to be a head coach. Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, certainly, I have the credentials, but uh, it just hadn't happened yet. But I'm not counting out yet. Yep. Good. Well, let's talk about a team that you're very familiar with, the Cowboys. Dallas had the top rush defense in the NFL last year and were fifth in points allowed. But they lost several key starters on the defensive side, including most of their starters in the secondary. Mm. Rob, you spent two years as the Cowboys defensive coordinator. So how much worse will this year's Dallas be defense be? I think the first thing you got to do is uh, see that what a great job Rod Marinelli's done. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, uh, you know, to come in and do the job he's done to implement a system of play that he has, yep. as you know, Skip, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he's done a remarkable job. The two corners are replaced were my corners, mm -hmm. you know, that were more man-to-man -man corner guys, uh, Brandon Carr and uh, Morris Claiborne. And I think, uh, you know, Skandrick can play in anything. He's, he's a terrific player, uh, the best – uh, slot corner in football. He's also really well. That's a uh, also a great. State. Oh, he, he's been that way for for a while now. It's just you know when he gets hurt, he, you know you can't have him. Yeah. But uh, I th I think they're actually going to be better. Really? I think when you wow. look at a Rod Marinelli defense, uh, you think turnovers, and right now they have not generated the turnovers that Marinelli's defense are, are famous for. And uh, I think once he gets to that, I think they'll actually be better. And I think they need. To be better, you know, obviously with uh, uh, Ezekiel Elliott being mm -hmm. out for six weeks, but uh, he's a terrific coach. I think uh, Matt Eberflus does a great job there as a linebacker coach, and and uh, and to me, they have the, the best middle linebacker in football, and Sean Lee, really? and, and uh, uh, he's a turnover machine himself because he studies so much film. He's a consummate pro, and uh, he he's a great leader. And, uh, you know, the big thing also is I love the way Jason Garrett ties the whole team together. I think uh, you could see he was a rising star. That's why I was really wanting to stay there after the uh, second year. Uh, we were really heading the right, right direction on defense, I thought. But uh, we got absolutely devastated with injuries. No coach talks about injuries, but dang, we had a bunch. You, you did. You know, and, uh, uh, but I knew Jason was going to be a superstar coach. And, and uh, I think I love the way he's tied – Two great coordinators, Linehan and, and Marinelli, together. Mm -hmm. Let them do their job, but lead the team, tie them together. And I think that's why that loss is not going to be as big as, mm -hmm. as people think. 
So I'm surprised you'd say they could be a little better because there's some severe experience losses in the secondary, obviously. Right. And they're going to have to play a few kids. They drafted a bunch of kids to play defense. Right. And the pass rush, I don't know, you're going to have to lean on Taco Charlton, their first-round pick, to right. generate some because David Irving's going to be gone for four games. He Was was he there when you were there? No, but I yeah. see him. He's the biggest yeah. kid I've ever seen. Nine, but, uh, number 95. Right. Yep. So – all of a sudden, if you can't generate a whole lot of pass rush, it puts even more heat, obviously, on the corners. Now, they play – their scheme is contradictory to yours, Absolutely. right? Right. Yes. It's the flip side yes. of yours because they're covered to zone corners, and they're mm -hmm. trying to draft zone corners now, right? Right. I, I think Will McClay does such a great he, job of identifying does. players, yep. and he's going to identify players that will help Ron Marinelli's scheme. So I know they got the two young corners they drafted. I bet you both will be exceptional corners. Uh, they they uh, signed uh, Nolan Carroll. They did. I think those guys will uh, fit really well into the scheme of things, and I think it's a credit to Will McClay. Hmm. Well, I'm going to have to get, disagree with you on two things. I think Chris Harris Jr. is the best slot corner, hmm. and I think Kinkley and Wagner are better than Sean Lee. But I, 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 I've tried to tell <laughs> no, you. I, I, what he but did. here's the thing. When, when you look at him, uh, uh, Rob, is that Byron Jones, Heath, uh, Skandrick started a little bit before he got injured, and Nolan Carroll. Now, we're still waiting on what the NFL is going to do with Nolan Carroll as far as suspension. Yep. But they're going to have – Right. Yep. They're going to have at least six, seven guys starting for the first time. Hey, remember Anthony Brown, that kid they drafted last right. year. He got – he started the last, I don't know, ten games last yeah, year. Yeah, right now they got him behind uh, yeah. no uh, uh, Skandrick. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be asking rookies to play heavy minutes. Now uh, – I, I, right. You, well, I think I think uh, I mean obviously you don't want that. You right. Know, uh, we know that in the National Football League, but but I think uh, I think you gotta I think you, you've got players that are drafted for this scheme. I right. think it'll help. I think uh, you saw that first preseason game where we were second uh, with all the turnovers. I right. think this is what he does. Marinelli does that, and and you talk about the pass rush. That's another stable with Leon Letts uh, uh, doing a great job with he the is. defensive line, learning under Rod Marinelli, who's, you know, a tremendous guy getting after the passer with the, you know, the front four. And uh, uh, I think I think they'll still generate the pass rush. I think, um, uh, you know, I can see with the scan with the Harris. You're probably right there. Harris, pretty good player. Yeah. But uh, Sean Lee to me, well, I've been around him every day. And and, uh, you know, you got to look. Uh, you know, beyond the things that aren't really seen, beyond the invisible things, Sean Lee brings everything to this football team. He's a leader. He studies more tape than coaches. He knows the opponent better than they do themselves. And uh, he's going to let them know the plays coming before they actually come. And I think that'll speed it up for these young guys. He's got a great voice out on the field. And, and I think uh, you, you rely more on his leadership. And I think uh, they'll be just fine. You know what concerns me most about this team, about this defense, is that they played so well last year because the offense always had a lead. Now, if Zeke's away and they can't have a lead, this is not a defense that generates turnovers because they play so much zone coverage and they don't really have that one guy like a J.J. Watt, like a Vaughn Miller, that you can say, okay, go get home and create a turnover. Does that concern you? Yeah, I mean, obviously it does, but I think – I think Scott Linehan does a fantastic job. Uh, you know, uh, before he had Elliott, they were still great running the football right. when they had DeMarco Murray. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, and, and McFadden had 1,000 yards for him, and he's still there. So uh, I, think, I think they'll do a great job. I think their offense won't change a bit. I know, uh, it, you know, you miss the all-pro running back who's one of the best in football, right. even though he's a rookie. Uh, but I love the Prescott kid. I think his leadership's unbelievable. I saw him play uh, live, uh, you know, in person twice uh, when my son was being recruited out there. And uh, what a leader. What a fun player to watch. And this is, this is the new NFL. You got, a, you got an outstanding young quarterback. They come in early and they play. Right. And, uh, you know, I think, I think uh, Will McClay did a fantastic job, again, identifying a, a great quarterback who we all wanted, and, and they, but they stepped up and took him. And who knew, you know, Romo would be out and, and this young man take over like mm. he did. So I, I think, I think uh, with Scott Linehan, I think the offense will stay the same, and, and they're going to have to be productive. And, Coach, forgive Shannon for this because he would never watch a Cowboy preseason game, but if you did watch as you did Saturday night, 
four times they separated Rams from the football. And I didn't see that last year, and it's like getting contagious now. It's going to be a new deal for this defense. The last part you said, yeah. they, they, they separated who from the football? Rams. Okay. <laughs> it was a home game for the Rams. It was their place, man. Uh, Colorado State Rams? Uh, no, no. Oh. You know who they are? Oh. You know, they're the Los Angeles oh. Rams. So, Coach, you worked under – now, Hall of Fame, Jerry Jones, Hall of Famer. Yes, sir. What was it like? What was it like to know him and be to be in his force field every day? Well, the great thing is I've somehow worked for three Hall of Fame owners. I know <laughs> Robert Kraft will be in there. Yeah. Al Davis is in there, who I absolutely mm -hmm. love. And I absolutely love Jerry Jones. I don't think anybody wants to win more than Jerry Jones does. Uh, maybe Steven. Uh, but I'm just saying I, I love his passion. I, you know, uh, this, is a, this is a man that let me go after two years. But I think they had the identity of wanting to run a Marinelli system, saying that, uh, you know, with Will McClay, that they could identify players easier uh, from college than they could a 3-4 defense. And I understand it all the way. Yeah. But I love Jerry. I think uh, they do a, a tremendous job of, of hiring good people, uh, you know, and, and they'll get a player from anywhere. And, uh, and I also know they take care of their players. Uh, I know they've had a lot of difficulties, which is unfortunate, obviously, with, with all the problems that they've had on their roster. But let me tell you, they have, they have systems in place that they use, that they give these young guys help, and they mean it because they love their players. And uh, that's what reminds me of the great Al Davis with Jerry Jones. He loves his players. They're the best part. You know, players are the best part of this league. And uh, he's going to take care of those guys and, and – uh, you know, I love coaching for him. I really mm. did. So even though he let you go after two years, you're swearing by him instead of at him, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and look, I knew I, I'd be working right away, and I, I had uh, were. two jobs. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, I just understood the direction of their team, and I understood why they wanted to do it. Why do you like the 3-4 so much instead of the 43? I like 3-4. I do both, but I, I but I, I, that's what makes it so good is you can be multiple and, and cause more problems. You're in 3-4, you're in 4-3. People don't know. And, and I think this, I think with all the gurus on offense, hey, they can spread them out and do all these <laughs> things. They don't have to adjust anything. They just call these plays and come up with these crazy formations yeah. and, and things like that. Well, on defense, I think you, your job as a coach especially if you don't have the upper echelon talent, right. is to cause confusion, right. is, is to create mismatches, and I think the 3-4 allows you to do that more than any of them. Mm -hmm. He survived all that Cowboys love pretty well, Shane. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, like, I know he hates it, but uh, I like he got me on, I like on a couple guys. I like the 3-4 defense, too. Mm -hmm. You just, treat him man. you just treat that back as a big and you'll be fine. <laughs> you never put him on your running back and you'll be mm. just fine. Mm. Right. We'll slap, we'll we, slap. Got, we got two of those big ones. So. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. Marshawn Lynch and Michael Bennett both sat on the sidelines for their team's preseason games this weekend. Bennett said the violent events in Charlottesville, Virginia, served as a catalyst for his action. Yesterday, Browns head coach Hugh Jackson said he understands the protests but doesn't want it to happen on his team. Mm. Let's take a listen. I think everybody has a right to do, you know, and I, and I get it, but the national anthem means a lot uh, to myself personally, our organization, our football team. I hope, you know, again, I can't speak. I haven't really talked to our team about it. I would hope we don't have those issues. I understand there's a lot going on in the world. Uh, I like to just keep it here, you know, what we deal with. We try to deal with as a team in our closed environment. We talk about things, but uh, hopefully that won't happen. I can't tell you it won't happen. But I, I just know our guys. I don't think that's where our focus is, and we hope the things that are going on in the world get ironed out. Uh, but I know right now we're, we're doing everything we can to, to get our football team better. We're joined once again by Rob Parker. Rob, are you okay with Hugh Jackson's position? No, I'm not okay with it. This is typical coach-speak nonsense where everything is always pushed back to football. Word, it's another C-word speak, yeah, too, but we won't go there, Rob. But this, it's always about football. That's the easy excuse, Shannon, in this case. Uh, to just always go back there. And things happen that are bigger than football. And the whole, I, I wish somebody, I wish that whole team would go and sit down just to let him know that, dude, don't, don't put that out there, that you hope it doesn't happen here. And people have their right. Oh, I understand and I understand about it, but I hope it doesn't happen here. I, what, what does that mean exactly? I, I could imagine Hugh Jackson in 1960 in Greensboro, North Carolina, when those students went to the Woolworths counter to go protest and sit in, and they asked Hugh to come join them, and he said, I got football practice. 
you no. know, it's, it's that kind of thing. I want the world to. I hope the world. Well, I hope the world. Out. I hope that gets ironed out while mm -hmm. I'm at football practice. Sometimes you gotta stop. When you talk about protest, it's not convenient. It's not supposed to be convenient. It's not supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be smooth. This is how you get things changed. You got to upset the apple cart sometimes. And if it means stopping football for a day or whatever you want to do, sometimes you got to do that. And the whole notion that it's all about football and that's all that matters, I, I'm not buying that nonsense because that's what it is. Protest should be uncomfortable and should be inconvenient. Skip, what good is a sit-in if you're trying to do it when the diner is closed? What good is a bus boycott if you're trying to do it at midnight when the buses don't run? <laughs> That's the whole purpose, Hugh. Think about this. Who are some of the highest paid endorsees in America? Athletes. Why is that, Skip? Because they're influential, Hugh Jackson. You're trying to suppress them when they should be lending their voice because maybe the youth and some of these older, older people will say, you know what? I like him. I like what he stands for. I like what he represents. Let me do a little self-reflection. Not you. How do you think you got a job to be a coach in the NFL? Oh, you think it's all you. People had to sacrifice and, and make a stink for them to go out for these co owners to hire black men to be head coaches. And then you, you think it just happened? No, there was blood, sweat, and tears from other people, and here you are reaping the benefits, and you don't want other people to go out he, and, and decide that sometimes you've got to make a move to make things change. I've seen this guy. Hugh Jackson is like a lot of these guys that be out here key keying and shucking and jiving. I made it. I'm good. I ain't worried about y'all. Hey, I'm over here. Boy, that's a, sh that's a shameful way to think, that... So many more men, black men, was as qualified as, or more qualified than Hugh Jackson didn't get a chance. And then John Wooten and some of these guys of the Fritz Pollard Alliance that's behind the scenes, mm -hmm. unseen mm -hmm. today. Yep. Not, to, not last year, not 10 years ago. Currently, Jim Caldwell, Marvin Lewis, Todd Bowles, mm -hmm. Think about how many black coaches. There was a time there were none. And now Hugh Jackson, well, I, you know, that national anthem. Go read it. I don't want you to sing it because you know why, Hugh? Because you can't find that third stanza. They took it out. But I want you to go read that, Hugh. And Skip, you said something. Well, you know, he's from L.A. There's something that Hugh Jackson was alive that happened in L.A. The 1968 race riots. Yep. Right here in L.A. Why do you think that popped off, Hugh? Think about the history with the blacks and the police in L.A. Yep. You, you know what happened with the Rodney King situation and how those guys got off. And we saw, and, and you know what? People always forget. There was videotape evidence and the cops still got off. We saw the tape. Mm -hmm. That's why people went to the streets because there's no justice. That's why people went to the... So sometimes when things don't go, you, you have to push back and you have to be willing to take a stand. You can't do it all the time. Can't always give me this football and let's practice and let's forget about... And everything else will just take care of itself. It doesn't work that way. Mm. I disqualify myself from this conversation. I am not black, obviously. So you sure? I can't... I just can't... <laughs> I can't feel what you're feeling. I do know Hugh a little... I like him as a football coach. I respect him as a football coach. I don't know him off the field like that. I don't know his social conscience. But he I do know I do know John Wooten, who runs the Fritz Pollard Alliance and oversees the Rooney Rule. And I've known him since 1979. I consider him one of my closest friends, and I communicate with him almost every day. And during the off-season, during the coach hiring season, I'm constantly texting with him about Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? So that I can come on here and use our platform, thank you, God, for our platform, to campaign for young black potential head coaches, not just in college football, but in the National Football League on both fronts mm -hmm. because they're out there. They're in the pipeline, and people don't know enough about them. And even the other day, we were talking about a couple of more I was not aware of. So I Google, look up their background. So I'm ready when it's time to hire 
to say, well, what about him? What about him? Because we don't say that enough. Correct. So on, on this one, I, I can't leap to the conclusion you guys have leapt to where he's selling out the black community because he's not taking the stand for his players' sake, or at least not, he's not encouraging them to take the stands they may, they well might want to take privately so far. Well, I'm going to tell you, like my grandfather used to say, Skip, he can't sell out because, hell, he didn't buy in. No, he didn't buy in. And yet, I, this is just me as a white guy, and I probably have no feel for this. I can't condemn him because I do know him well enough to know he's... He's a little fearful of his job right now because they're not very good. He doesn't have a huge platform. He's not Bill Belichick, you know, like he, he doesn't have Super Bowls to his credit where he can say, I'm empowered. I'm emboldened here. I can step up on a platform I have earned because he hasn't earned one. He got fired in Oakland and it was pretty messy. Yes. OK, so that didn't look good. And he was actually pretty fortunate to get a second chance at being a head coach as a black man. And how did he get the, that chance? Because Marvin Lewis threw him a lifeline. Put him on the other he side did. of the ball, and then he brought him back when Jake Rudin went away. He, he did, and, and Hugh was really good. And I think he was, in 2015, I believe he was the assistant coach of the year in the National Football mm -hmm. League, which requalified him, quote-unquote, to become a candidate to become a head coach. Yes. And Jimmy Haslam said, I want Hugh Jackson. But, but, but so, remember, they're not very good. They're, they have the third-worst Super Bowl odds. Is it possible they could get off wrong doing a you know, musical chair quarterback situation and go 0-16? It's possible. So all he cares about right now is not social protest. He's trying to keep his team unified. He believes in team unity. I get where you're going. I'm with you. I'm, I'm always with your... You know, I'm with everything Colin Kaepernick has said and done. But you can't expect everybody to risk their job for the cause that you believe in. But, but it's not about risking your job. It's you don't just, think it no, would be? No, no, and I'm not telling, I'm not saying that he's at, tells the players to, to protest. Oh, that would be different, Skip. But the whole idea that, that you would throw water, a wet blanket on, on all your players saying that you don't want it to happen. Like, he threw it out there. I, I don't want it to happen here. Instead no, of he saying... Said, uh, he, instead he of say basically saying... Let's do it internally. Well, again, uh, to your point, that doesn't do any good. That, that, we can that, all that, talk about it internally. Right. And but he said, let's do it, but even though I don't, haven't talked to him about right. it. Right. And, and he, didn't, he didn't even admit it that he didn't. And my only point would have been, I would have just had more respect had he said, hey, these are trying times. There are a lot of yeah. bad things going yeah. on in the world. He, and he I did sort of dismiss, he just, oh, right. we got trouble in the world. Yeah. I hope it no. gets ironed out. And I he, hope it gets ironed out. Oh, and, here's the thing, though, Rob. See, here's the problem that I have. Yep. See, he's worried about his job. There's a lot of young black men and women on arm worried about their life. They are. No, That's I, bigger. No doubt. Bigger. No doubt. Well, you keep your job. You, you are. You in the NFL. Okay, but to Hugh, right here, right now, as game one approaches quickly, he's just worried about trying to win game one. I mean, can you condemn him for that? I, I don't know. I don't. That's just me. But I'm, I'm not black. Well, again, yeah. every... NFL coach this year is going to have to answer this question probably throughout the year because Michael Bennett said he's going to protest and there's going to be other players protesting mm -hmm. because of everything out there in the world that Hugh hopes gets I, ironed out. But I would love to well, see all the black coaches kneel down and all the players in your league. Well, I, you know what I've said. I, 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 would I love still to. don't understand why the Seahawks and the Ravens didn't protest to the point over not signing Colin Kaepernick that they said we will boycott game one. I, that's what I would do. And Black coaches, you know, whoever, assistants or whoever. You, you, yeah. you, at some point, I mean, I just, just got to take a stand. I, I agree. You got to bigger there. than you. Rob, thanks for joining us. No mercy. Yesterday, Odell Beckham Jr. added another play to his reel of amazing one-handed catches. Listen to Ben McAdoo and Beckham on the catch. I told the receivers in the room, I said, I don't know what happened. It just, I just kind of clicked out. Like I said, I'm in a different place right now. And he threw the ball, and I was like, I've, I've seen this before. It, it felt like it was like a dream, you know what I mean? And... Uh, just being able to have that confidence and come down with those plays. Uh, I, I try and bring a lot of energy to this team, especially to my wide receiver room. I like two hands on the ball better than one. I like completions better than incompletions. We're joined mm. by Fox and William. That's Greg Nannings. Mm. Welcome, Greg. Very snazzy tie. Mm -hmm. uh, Greg, do you like that McAdoo said he prefers two hands on the football? He has to say it. He has to say that. I like what Ben said. I don't think there's anything wrong with what Ben said. When you... No, when you're when you're talking <laughs> when you're talking about receivers, obviously, you want them to get two hands on the ball. Having said all of that, yes, this guy right here is special. Ooh. This guy is a unique talent. I personally 
and maybe you can you you have a different experience. I never practice. I've done it. I've never practiced every day consistently one hand routine and made them routine catches. I mean, he does it pregame, before practice, after practice, in the off season, during the se he does in the game, in practice, and and then watching that clip. That's one on one. That's red zone one on ones yes. right there. Yes. That's red zone one on ones. You do anything to beat the defender. It's it's wide receivers versus defensive yep. backs. Yep. Who's winning the day? Mm. That's how you judge who won the day. One on ones. Yep. Mm. So you do whatever it takes to come down with the ball. Like Ben said, I like completions better than incompletions. But he has to say, you know, I want my guys to get two hands on the ball. The thing I like about what Odell Beckham is doing is we we were all taught to practice how you play. He practices these catches. It's not something that he's going out there trying to showboat. And it's, it's, it looks great, and it looks like straight showmanship when he does it because he catches them more than he drops them. Or we see the ones that he catch. Yeah. So I, I enjoy it. I embrace it. As a coach, Ben has to say that. He has a room of other receivers that can't do that. So he don't want everybody in that room doing that. But like, like Odell said, I, I bring a spark. I bring an energy to this room, to this unit. It's not a lot of receipts. I was down in Miami with a young kid, Jarvis Landry. He's doing the same type of things. But that kid right there that we just saw, no. special. No, Ben McAdoo, wrong, wrong, wrong. No. Ben McAdoo is a storm cloud trying to rain on Odell's parade. <laughs> Because Odell really, because he's only making $1.8 million, what could be a distraction, he could get no hands on it and be holding out because he want more money. You know he's earned it, Skip. And I know what you're going to do. You don't know. I know. You're going to you have Healy Bragg up. Oh, he was down in Miami before the most important <laughs> game and the drop. Oh, I forgot about yeah, that. Hey, Thanks for bringing that up. Hey, hey, but I got that's something, That's true. And that, I know, that's a good point. I know what you're thinking. finally made a good point. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. You're thinking 88 is going to get an opportunity to do that, what Odell did to him yesterday. But, oh, no. I didn't hey, DJ, that. can you drop that track for me right quick? Oh, so you're dropping I got a track. <laughs> I got a track on the DJ to play that song for me right quick, Skip. No, I mean, no, no. Are no, these no, old Shannon Sharp highlights? This is what's going to happen okay. to you, Dez. So, so this, this is what's going to happen to you, Dez. No, uh, wait, no. wait. This is a topic about no, Odell no. Beckham Jr. And suddenly Jack he relapsed. Look at Jack Rabbit. Yeah. Get the ball to a fan, oh, Jack Rabbit. Man. This is for you, Dez. This is what you will get. Skip, did I routine? The only time I practiced one-hand catches was basically pat and go or on the jugs machine afterwards. Everybody says those catches that he make is luck. Skip. No. <laughs> Victory goes to the man who has his house prepared. Mm. Luck, some call it. Mm. You practice blitz pickup. Why do you practice blitz pickup, uh, pick Skip? Oh, they might blitz in the game. Mm. Skip, why do you practice uh, an onside kick? <gasps> they might onside kick the ball in the game. Mm. Cause Green Bay an opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. You know about onside kick, yep. Skip. I have no problem with Odell. Odell, keep doing what you do. Mm, tell me when you're finished. Now, I like Tom Coughlin yeah. say, oh, David Tyree, I wish you'd have caught the ball with two hands, even though he caught it on his helmet. You remember that, Skip? No, he caught it with three hands, including his face mask. What that about counted as his oh, third hand. That should have been a hand uh -huh. of God. I think uh -huh. God held that thing on top of uh -huh. Tyree's head. <laughs> I have no problem with Odell. He handled it like, I know I should get two hands on the ball, mm -hmm. but when you got this old Spider-Man hands, they stick it mm. like I got. So help me out. Did the Giants win a game yesterday? Off that red zone play that he made? No. Nope. Are they 1 0 now? Or I, nope. I don't know. I lost track. Skip, that ain't what we're talking about. No. Nope. They so, don't have a better record than the Cowboys. So, speaking of dropping tracks, I, I need some help on this because the last time I saw Odell in a real game, it was third and five at the Green Bay, 30, oh. you know, Green Bay, 35. And this was actual, this was a game that really counted. It was a playoff game. Oh, and Eli was three for his first three. And what happened? What happened on third and five at the 35? It's nothing to nothing. It's no the video. Giants opening drive. We got no Wait, video. Eli, nice pass right in the hands. Wait, did he one hand that? Odell Beckham Jr., number 13. Wait, it went right. That ball too sleek. Look at all oh, that shine. The ball's Look too at all that shine on that ball. Oh, there's too much shine on the ball. I'm Wait, not, I, wait no, a second. He Hold dropped on. it. He dropped Hold it. On. Look at he all dropped that shine. it. It went right through Absolutely. two hands. So he didn't do that or that. 
He, and, he did. Whoops, that. If that had been a Tom Brady ball, he'd have uh, caught it so easy. Uh, you know how Tom got uh, the nerve ball. Oh, my bad. I, so that one really counted. And I guess Odell didn't practice enough with two hands. Because stop. we know in the game you might have to use two hands to catch balls, right? What about the catch he had against old Carr? I, you know what? That was the greatest catch I ever saw. And that was with one hand. And who won that game? Oh, I think yep. Dallas won it. And what is Odell's record in games he's played in so far in the National Football League in three seasons? 21 and 22. So he's a sub-500 player doing that and that. Wait because, a minute. You can't put the time uh, I am because he's – well, wait. He, he, he already told us he wants to be paid like the best player in all of football. Not just the best receiver. He thinks he deserves top player money. So if you're the top player and you're 21 and 22 and you took your receivers on a little soiree down to South Beach, to the Yacht Club, you guys were practicing, getting ready. That's what you, you knew you were going to get sunshine at Lambeau, right, in January? You just knew what was coming at, in, at Lambeau Field, right? Yeah. You, you just knew that the ball at, was at some point it was going to, what, be 85 and, and sunny Maybe. and clear and, and windless? Is that, cause, so you need to be out on the deck of a yacht in, I think they're in Biscayne Bay. I don't looks know. Like it. Yeah, it sure looks like it. So that's where you get ready for he Lambeau, wins. right? So he, here's what's wrong. Odell said, I'm in a different place right different. now. He's on planet Odell. He has lost all touch with priority and reality. He's at camp. All, all he wants to do is continue to build the Odell brand. Am I right? Why not? He, he needs to create more and more internet sensations. He needs viral catches because it makes Odell's brand bigger and bigger. He can do it. Yeah. He can get it done. He, when you watch, watch him in Pat and Go before the game, yeah. he's doing the same yeah. very things. Do you this know, isn't something that he's... How many one-handed catches have you actually seen him make in a game? A you don't, I know one. You, you, I know you, one. He made another but one against Washington up the sideline. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. A lot of guys can't make that one-handed catch mm -mm. because they get too tense. Yeah. But he he's practiced it, so he re, he's so yeah. relaxed. He, okay. he I has got no... it. He's special. But where does how does it contribute to winning football games? In the end, aren't two hands better than one? Two I hands. Think you guys better. would know. I, be, yeah. I believe if you asked him that, he knows that. Yeah. He does. He believes I hope that. He would. And but he I'm... also knows that the internet needs one hand. Right? Hold up, but hold up. It's, it's I, a, if you need to sell you, your you clothing make, line. You make a point. They're in camp. Yeah. That's, you got to make camp fun. You got to make people, you got to make your teammates yeah. want to be oh. there during the grind. He does, he makes circus catches. He's like a globetrotter, like the yeah. NFL's first globetrotter. It's Before needed. Before real games, it's needed. his whole, he goes out early to put on a show, show. for the early fans. Right? All bit. And what is that? Is that helping your team win games, or is that building your personal brand? Help me out. It's hey, building you, your brand. You help the team. Do, hold on. Now, I saw on the Internet last week Aaron Rodgers throw a ball 50 yards into a net up the left side. I see quarterback Drew Brees practicing throwing the ball 50 yards, hitting the crossbar. How does that help them win a game? Okay. Is that a drill they're doing, or are they trying to put on a show for the fans and for the Internet? The man made Help the me out. That was the only way he could make I mean, the Knowing Aaron Rodgers, he's probably trying to put on a show. He, right? I mean, he's doing both. This is a drill, be, but he, yeah. he's, he's a showman. It's an entertainment skill. Okay. Good. What's Aaron <laughs> Rodgers' record since the Super Bowl? <laughs> Five and six in the postseason. Way to go, Aaron. What's That's that, all-time what, great. What's, That's Mount Rushmore. What's Dak Prescott record uh, in the playoffs? Oh, and oh and one. One. he was a rookie I starting quarterback. I, now he a rookie. And guess what? Oh, he man. put up 31 points in his first start as a rookie Russell in Wilson. the playoffs. Oh, Russell Wilson, 31 points? So, so, How so, great is that? So is, that a more, is that a moral victory right there? They moral victory. Those? He did everything he could do. Is oh, that, everything you know he could do. If, if I could have put Dak in at safety, maybe he would have made a play on Jared Cook. Well, he had an opportunity to make some plays. How did they get down 21-3? Did they not get the ball? The defense wasn't ready to play. Oh, now the <laughs> defense. Now you're going to shift the blame on the defense. Oh, you hear that? You hear that, that Taco? not funny. It's Taco. Not true. What's so funny? Hold on. Now they, the they were too good for their own good. They they had to shut it down the last three weeks of the regular season because they'd already clinched. Well, next time, Offense, pick it up. Offense huh? sputtered out huh? of the gate. Yes, sputtered. sputtered. He's a rookie. Sputtered. He's a fourth-round pick. <laughs> yeah. Wait a second. Yeah, wait. Keep coughing while he threw for 300 yards? Wait, 300 yards? What Aaron Rodgers broke for? Uh -oh. They won? I have no uh, idea. Week one All is I know be is fun. that Mason Crossbar hit field goals. Stop doing that man like that. No mercy.
There's a lot of speculation that LeBron will take his talents to L.A. when he becomes an unrestricted free agent at the end of next season. LeBron added to those rumors yesterday when he tweeted birthday wishes to Magic Johnson. LeBron tweeted, happy birthday, Magic Johnson, one of the few that's always showed love from day one to me. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Magic responded, thank you, King James. I appreciate the love. Skip, what do you make of LeBron's tweet? Analyze it, because I know you want to anyway. I, I got it. I, I'm just, I'm going to have to be honest. When I was told this tweet last night over the phone, I don't follow LeBron like you do. I hate her. I don't follow anybody. But when I was told this tweet, and I was told that LeBron James dared to use the phrase, one of the few that's always showed love. Yeah. One of the few. Few. I mean, size few. Yeah. I nearly fell out of my chair because... Who are we talking about? Over the years, over the, what are we up to now, 14 years that LeBron James has played in the NBA. Yeah, coming up on 15. Coming up on 15, the, the only X star who hasn't just gushed love to and for LeBron James is one Michael Jeffrey Jordan. And you can say he's threatened or whatever. I just say Michael's honest and he sees a lot of what mm -hmm. I see or don't see in mm -hmm. LeBron and he's just not convinced. So... I know, let's, let's take Charles Barkley. <laughs> Charles was critical last year of LeBron. We know that. And did LeBron ever fire back with some low blows? Woo! Ooh. Low blows. I love that phrase, both of them. But over the years, Bill. over the years, Charles Barkley has done nothing but rave on national TV about what a great guy and a great player LeBron James is. But? And there's no buts. I mean, coaches from Popovich to Krzyzewski over the years have done nothing but rave about what a great all-around basketball player LeBron James is. And to, to me, in sports history, there's never been a player who's gotten more passes for failing at the highest level than LeBron James for the meltdowns and the coming up smalls in various playoff or NBA final mm -hmm. series than LeBron James. In fact, I can make the case that LeBron is the most overprotected athlete in sports history. And he's trying to make the case one of the few who's always shown me love. So here we go again with LeBron trying to build the false narrative that nobody likes him. He doesn't have enough help and nobody likes him. Poor LeBron. This is so childish and, and we all know it's so wrong. Poor pitiful LeBron because is he, is he an outcast? Is he a pariah? After 14 years, he made $55 million off the court last year, according to Forbes. That's based a lot on your appeal, your popularity, how many people love you, how many people will buy the products that you are endorsing. Everybody loves LeBron. Everybody. It's, it's rampant, the love for him, yet he's trying to make the case that that Magic Johnson is one of the few who has shown him one. love? One of the few? How can you refute this? Show me who, who has it. I, I, I need you to show me who hasn't shown you know. LeBron love. You know. I only know one. Okay. Michael Jeffrey Jordan okay, is by then. far the greatest player ever. Mm -hmm. That's it. Period. End of story. Yeah, okay. Who else? <laughs> Help me. Skip, you look at getting to the finals and losing as failure. So what happens if you don't even make the finals? Is that failure? Okay, but that's not the question at hand. Who hasn't shown him love? We know who he's talking about. First of one, all... But, first, but one of the few. LeBron's game mimics more Magic Johnson on and off the court than Michael Jordan. Okay, I buy that. But My, that's not answering the question. Of course. Who because is, LeBron, he's talking about Michael Jordan. Because Michael, at every turn, has tried to minimize what LeBron okay. has done. Okay, but you can't say one of the few because it's a majority of, of X stars love LeBron and gush about, rave about LeBron James. But Skip, let me let me let me take it from this perspective. Going back to the Hall of Fame and have the Mean Joe Greens and some of the players come up to me and said, "You're in here, so obviously you were a heck, heck of a player." to what you're doing now, and to hear you, and to hear you speak on topics, I'm proud. Mm -hmm. That means something to me. I saw Mean Joe at the Fritz Pollard yes. banquet this year at the yes. Super Bowl, and he said the same thing to me to tell you. It means something to have some of the all-time greats to acknowledge 
And that's what LeBron mm -hmm. is saying. So hold on. You ain't, I ain't saying you got to bow down before me. But just acknowledge. Don't try to put me down at every turn. Because we've seen this, Skip. It, he's more Magic Johnson because Magic was good in his community, and so was Bron. See, Magic put Magic Johnson theaters, Starbucks. He didn't build liquor stores. LeBron James went in his own pocket through his foundation. 1,100 kids from the Akron area going to college on LeBron's dime. Okay, Skip. we got it. Le we got it. How about You're not answering the question. What's the question? The question is, who doesn't love LeBron? Show me any besides Jordan who don't Skip, love... Skip, that's who he's talking about. Charles okay, Barkley. Then Char why would you say? Here's what you should have done. Then in in your no, tweet, you you, you, you should have injecting yourself. No, what I'm not. Done. Just just put a U in all caps. You were the one who always showed me love there from been, the start. There then it a, would be clear it was a shot at oh, Michael Charles Jordan. Barkley's tried to take a shot. Oh, LeBron, you want all the good players? You want all the good players? That, that was last year. I can show you. I, I bet we could we could do a highlight reel of things. Charles Barkley has said over the previous however long Charles has been on he's TNT taking his for shots. 14 he's years, taking his he shots has too. not taken his shots. Oh, LeBron's not a top Just five last player. Year. Just last oh, year. LeBron, there's nothing LeBron can do can ever be Charles a team. Charles loves LeBron Skip. until last has year. LeBron, has Charles Barkley said there's nothing LeBron can accomplish that would ever put him in the top five? Has he said that, yes or no? I don't remember that. I, I remember. I'm just remembering gushing about LeBron this no. and LeBron that. No, no. Yeah. And LeBron is saying uh, uh, magic. You've shown me love from day one. Okay, so I'll give you two, okay? And it's wrong, but I'll give you Barkley and Jordan. Okay. Now give me more. I don't need more. Who else is ripped I don't, LeBron? I don't, I, because, hold on. One of the few? Because, well, the, because, they're, they're you know like, why? there you are know, 100 ex-superstars in the NBA. You, because you know why? All the other guys are not threatened by their legacy. You did what you did while you played. Okay, if somebody comes along and they score more points, they grab more rebounds, they win more titles, more MVPs, oh, so be it. You did what you did. All right, but you're not answering one of the few in the tweet is the phrase. Yes. And, and it's building a false narrative that nobody loves no, LeBron. It's not. No, it's not. You're yes, reading that is. in. You no, read, I'm not. You, no. One of the few? Every, everybody knew because that was the first name you brought up. You knew who LeBron was talking about. Everybody knew who LeBron was talking well, about. Then you can't use the phrase one of the few. Is, is Michael Jordan, oh, so he's equal to thousands? Is that? Skip. Stop. No, start. No. Help no. me. Help me. I'm, you, I'm lost you know, here. You know exactly what he's talking about. You want him to say, oh, Larry Bird didn't show me love. Magic, uh, 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 Michael, and, and this one and that one. That's not what he was doing. His, his point hit where it was supposed to hit. His point is that a majority of ex-stars in the NBA did not show him love, but Magic was one of the maybe, few who did. Maybe he hadn't. What is that? It's a false narrative. No, it's not. No, it's, it's not. Poor, pitiful you make, You're making it seem he like wants sympathy. You're making it seem like he's come in contact with every great that played before him. Well, he reads what they say. That's neither here nor there. You're doing a false narrative. You're you're trying to make it seem like uh, uh, LeBron has come into contact with every great player that played before him. No, that's not what he said. Mm -hmm. He's saying you're one of the few. That shown me love. You're one of the few, Skip, that gave your boy some credit and said, you know what? I think Shannon can do this. I did. So but that's not the question at hand. Skip, he laid it out I, for you. I was the only one who said yes. you can do this. Yes. Okay, so tweet that. I did. He was the only one. Thank you. I, I tell I okay. tell him all the time. All I right. told my sister, I, I'm playing a lot of them okay. trying to win that 393 million. Yeah, but you're not gonna leave. No, nope. I told my sister. How much have you lost in the lottery? I don't know, I don't count. 393 million. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish. Yeah. But Skip, that's the thing though, Skip. All these look, Magic has has been is not hesitant to heap praise on LeBron when it's due. He's also said there are some things that LeBron probably could have done better. That's okay. But Skip, I'm not, listen, I'm not going out of my way to try to minimize. Look, that's like me every time I turn around, try to minimize what Gronk has done. I had my time, or oh, minimize what Greg Olson or any of these guys have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, went and got a bunch of, got a bunch more catches than me. I'm, well, if I was playing right now, oh, how many, uh, come I, on. I mean, we can already see Rico Gathers is already better. Oh, than shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Rico from a, a Miami Vice. Yeah, maybe. Crockett. Yeah. I'm really surprised we went in that direction. I thought we were going to talk about how he's coming to L.A. No, he ain't coming to L.A. No? 
Now, and, we, and we might play with Magic because we like Magic. I don't know. And you know, by the way, I feel so sorry for LeBron because I just Why? read that based on last year's one loss records of opponents as the schedule just got released, yeah. guess who plays the easiest schedule in the NBA, in the entire NBA? Who? The Cleveland Cavaliers. They have the easiest schedule based on last year's one loss in the NBA. Because so I am, you know, I'm crying crocodile tears for LeBron James because he's got it rough, man. But Skip. He plays the easiest schedule in the league. But next you got to think about it. He okay. doesn't need Kyrie. They he doesn't need the, anybody. They played the Bulls, and the Bulls lose Jimmy Butler. They played the Pacers, and the Pacers lose Paul George. Okay, but now you're making my case because remember, this is based on how the teams finished last year yeah. with those guys. Exactly. And, and now not, they lost them. Exactly. So it's even easier than it looks. No. Yes. It's not. Th th when, this when you're is great. I, I said last year was the easiest, the biggest cakewalk in the history of the Eastern Conference. Now this year it is. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us again same time Thursday morning, 9:30 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports, one of one.